criminal networks trafficking in drugs, people, arms, are a clear and present danger to modern day society. We believe in the state's responsibility to protect its people equally from those who deny and destroy the human rights of others. In particular, the criminal trades and organizations that take wealth, destroy the health, and the very minds of decent law-abiding people in increasing numbers. Further, he said, as a sovereign nation, we deserve respect and even support for our right to life and liberty, our sovereign right to self-determination, to make our people safe and secure from all threats, terrorism, corruption, and criminality. As you have seen in the ISIS attempt to take over Marawi, terrorism pretending to be an ideology or pursuit of religious beliefs, which were manipulated and perverted, is absolutely destructive and funded by the drug trade. We owe it to the 10 million Filipinos working overseas to keep their children and families safe. We owe it to all Filipinos to keep the Philippines safe. This same concern articulates the President's uncompromising stand against the abuse of migrant workers, numbering more than 10 million. To quote the President, the Filipino is no slave to anyone anywhere and everywhere. He continues, the Philippines' comprehensive campaign against corruption, terrorism, and criminality, especially against the methamphetamine trade, is a necessary instrument to preserve and protect the human rights of all Filipinos. It was not meant and should never be an instrument to violate any individual groups, individuals or groups' human rights. The Philippine president has called law enforcers who abuse their position and violate their own people's rights as worse than criminality itself. When does the quest for human rights become a human wrong? It is when human rights is politicized and weaponized. When a UN Special Rapporteur cries out like the Queen in Alice in Wonderland, first the judgment and then the trial. When she calls evidence only for what might support her prejudgment, she loses the moral high ground and is stripped of any credibility. It is our collective responsibility to ensure the integrity and effectiveness of this Council's special procedure system. For this purpose, it is imperative that all special procedures mandate holders must strictly observe the special procedures code of conduct. That this regard, take to heart our Secretary General's warning not to politicize nor to weaponize human rights. May I recall, how will the honorable members of this council convince countries to work with the Human Rights Commission if there is a perception of prejudice and prejudgment? May I recall that several member states have also expressed concerns about the conduct of certain mandate holders. Yet such conduct elicits cheers and encouragement from some NGOs who have lost their ways, their way, who claim to fight for human rights but conveniently forget the basic tenet of human rights who forget the purpose of the special procedure and other mechanisms of the Human Rights Council. We will not allow these NGOs to port portray an unfair and unjust image of our country, nor will we let it question the strength of our democracy. An example is the advocacy to legalize drugs. With no real research, some NGOs judge and condemn the government's campaign against drugs and criminality. We call this faulty generalization. The Philippines reaffirms its commitment to the spirit of multilateralism embodied in the very creation of the United Nations in the work and aspirations of this Council. Constructive engagement in a multilateral context is badly needed in our world today. We need to engage and act, not merely name and shame.